Namo Bhutthaya and welcome. This is Abhinav. Uh, in this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 51. Uh, the title of the discourse is with Kandaraka and uh, the uh, name of the Sutta is Kan Kandaraka Sutta. Right? So basically here, uh, what happens is that Pesa, the elephant driver's son and Kandaraka, the wanderer, went to see the Buddha and uh, when they saw the Buddha who was with the mendicants and there was a complete silence uh, and they were practicing meditation, uh, they felt very good, they felt very incredible and amazing. So they said that, uh, no, how amazing is this? And uh, so Buddha said, yes, they are in this Sangha, there are perfected mendicants who have ended defilements completely and they are also mendicants who are trainee mendicants who are consistently ethical and they practice the mindfulness meditation, four kinds of mindfulness meditation. And then Buddha describes the four kinds of mindfulness meditation, which is basically uh, uh, described in detail in Middle Discourses 10, which is Satipatthana Sutta. And B Buddha says that it's when a mendicant meditates by observing an aspect of the body, keen, aware and mindful, rid of covetousness and displeasure, then aspect of feelings, aspect of mind, aspect of principles. Right? So Buddha just gave that description. So Pesa said, yes, sir, uh, it's, it's incredible how well described by the Buddha are the four kinds of mindfulness meditation. Meditation. They are in order to purify sentient beings, to get past sorrow and crying, to make an end to pain and sadness, to discover the system and to realize extinguishment. For we, white-clothed, laid people, also from time to time meditate with our minds well established in the four kinds of mindfulness meditation. We meditate observing an aspect of the body, feelings, mind, principles, keen, aware and mindful, rate of covetousness and displeasure for the world. So Pesa was very diligent, very, uh, and Buddha uh, uh, appreciated him. Um, after some time he left, but then Buddha said that he uh, he is a very wise person. So, so there is this reference of the four kinds of mindfulness meditation that we practice. Right? So, if you want to know it in detail, then you can check out my video on MN10. Right? You can just type MN10 in the search bar and that is the main discourse, one of the most important discourses given by the Buddha on Satipatthana Sutta. How to do mindfulness meditation. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. There are four people, uh, Buddha said, there are four people found in this world. Right? What four? Right? Now, uh, this basically discourse focuses on four kinds of people that Buddha uh, said. One person who mortifies himself, mortify means gives pain to himself and committed to the practices of mortifying himself. Second is one person who mortifies others. Third is one person who mortifies themselves and others both. Fourth person who doesn't mortify themselves or others, committed on the practice of not mortifying themselves or others. They live without wishes in the present life extinguished, cooled, experiencing bliss with self becoming divine. So these are the four kinds of people. Right? So, right. So, so, so this is, and after that, Pesa left. Pesa had some work to do. So he left. And then Buddha said that uh, if it would have been uh, continued, it would have uh, helped because he is very astute. He has great wisdom. If we had sat longer, I could have analyzed these four people in detail. But then Buddha said, because the mendicants were sitting. So Buddha said, Okay, let me start and explaining more details about what are these four kinds of people. So, first person is what person who mortifies themselves committed to the practice of mortifying themselves. Now, this is basically Buddha told about these these uh, people who practiced a lot of extreme austerities. Like, for example, Buddha says, someone goes naked, ignoring conventions, lick their hands, don't come wait, come or wait when called, don't consent to food being brought to them, or don't receive anything from a pot or bowl or from someone who keeps sheep or who has a weapon. Accept no fish or meat or liquor or wine. Go out just to just one house for arms, taking just one mouthful or two houses and two mouthfuls. So like those people who are, you know, very, very much giving pain to their body, that right? they believe in, you know, getting, giving pain to the body is the path to salvation. So those kind of people are the first kind of people who give pain to themselves, right? So that is what Buddha explained. I am not going into too much detail. I am just keeping it short and simple so that you get a gist. You can read the full discourse. The link is given in the description. Second, Buddha said, and what person mort 
mortifies others committed to the practice of mortifying others these are the kind of people who are killers these are the people who slaughter slaughterer of sheep pigs poultry hunter trapper fisher bandit executioner butcher jailer or someone with other kind of cruel livelihood anyone which who has a cruel livelihood which has even putting any any sentient being to harm or suffering right so uh, that person is the person who is qualifies in the second category of person who mortifies others then third question comes uh, who is the person who mortifies themselves and others being committed to the practice of mortifying themselves so please understand here what the takeaways for us first who mortifies himself extreme practices buddha himself did this kind of extreme practice and realized that they would not lead to freedom from suffering so friends if we do any kind of very extreme practices like fasting and all too much of this giving pain to the body it's not good we should desist we should practice the middle way which the buddha gave that not indulge too much in sensual pleasures not indulge too much too much in self mortification middle way second is person who who mortifies others right that is person who practices any form of cruel livelihood so friends we will not practice and this is one of the noble eightfold paths right livelihood so we will not practice any livelihood which involves harms to others for example and, and and very very must that we will not practice any occupation which involves slaughtering killing butchering right others even if uh, even the practice of you know uh, cultivating rearing milk from cows this causes lot of suffering to the cows untold suffering to the cows right so we will not engage in those occupations poultry right we will not do that right uh, even honey right any of you know generating the animal products we will not engage in those kind of occupations which involves any form of cruelty to the animal or you know people who uh, you know take uh, birds as prisoner and you know and then keep them in cages or animals keep them in cages we will not do that so that is the second kind we will avoid third is when the person mortifies himself for others being committed to the practice of mortifying now how does a person mortifies himself and others now this buddha is saying a person who is either an anointed an aristocratic king or a well to do brahmin right he has a new temple built to the east of the city he shaves off his hair and then smears his body with oil then he will you know uh, feed on the milk from one teat of the cow and the calf then milk uh, from the fourth teat is served to the sacred flame the calf feeds on the remind, remainder he says slaughter this many bulls buckloes buffaloes goats rams and horses for the sacrifice fell this many trees and reap as much grass for the sacrificial equipment his bond servants employees workers do their job under the threat of punishment danger weeping with tearful faces this is a person who mortifies themselves and others so this is basically lot of this is the vedic rituals where you do these animal sacrifices and uh, uh, you know uh, inflict not only harm on yourself that means perform too much of penance you sit on grass and do these rituals and you inflict penance on yourself you inflict harm and uh, untold suffering on the animals as well as your employees and servants who because of your fear are doing participating all these things so this is where it's basically mortifying himself and others so buddha was totally against these all these vedic rituals and these practices which involved you know animal sacrifices all these are mentioned in rigveda if you want to study you can check out the relevant verses in the rigveda rigveda later on as buddha raised his voice and after after time people also realized that these practices are not the right practices we should not uh, kill animals for the sake of these rituals and all right so so we will not do those things right okay fourth is a person who doesn't mortify either of themselves or others but lives without wishes extinguished cooled experiencing bliss with self becoming divine it's when a realized one arises in the world perfected a fully awakened buddha accomplished in knowledge and conduct he realizes his with his own insight this world and he reveals a spiritual path that is entirely full and pure what is the spiritual path that he reveals it is the noble eightfold path and now buddha talks about that person who follows his teaching 
so that person follows his he leaves his family life he goes in the as a home becomes a homeless as a mendicant and then he takes up the training and they give up the killing living creatures renouncing the rod and sword scrupulous living full of compassion give up stealing take what's only given give up unchastity celibate give up lying so lot of those the monastic rules are given give up divisive divisive speech eh right? go give up talking nonsense avoid injuring plants eat at only one time of the day abstaining from eating at night or food at the wrong time avoid seeing shows or dancing singing music avoiding beauty avoid high and luxurious beds avoid receiving gold money raw meat women girls male and female bond servants avoid running errands right so all these things the person starts to follow being a monastic now if you want to read more on the bhikkhus see monastics have another set of precepts that they follow which are much more detailed than the lay people lay people have to at minimum follow the five precepts no killing no stealing no lying no sexual misconduct no drinking minimum five but for monastics they follow a much more detailed list of precepts so those are all coming here if you want to read and understand more on this you can you can read a book bhikkhus guide bhikkhus rules guide for lay people which is uh, you can just search for this book it is available as a free pdf at paryati web uh, no, not paryati but some website it is available it's a, as a free ebook you can read to get an insight on how a monastic life is right so then so then buddha talks about then that they see when they see a site with their eyes they don't get caught up in the features and details that means they see this they know what they are seeing they know that they are walking they do not get caught up right they are mindful they act with situational awareness they then they when their entire spectrum of noble ethics noble comment contentment noble sense restraint and noble mindfulness and situation awareness is maintained they then sit to meditate and then they get all the four absorptions absorption 1 2 3 4 after the fourth absorption they get the three knowledges which is the knowledge towards recollection of past lives knowledge of death and rebirth of the sentient beings and the knowledge towards the ending of defilements right they get the knowledge of the four noble truths and then they finally understand that, that this is the defilement this is the origin this is the cessation this is the practice that leads to cessation knowing this they are totally liberated and this is person is called a person who is neither modify themselves or others they have committed to the practice of not modifying themselves they live without the wishes in the present life extinguished cooled experiencing bliss with self becoming divine right so these are the four kinds of people that buddha said so our lesson from this particular discourse is that one is uh, not doing ex- extreme practices not uh, being cruel to anyone any sentient being right then uh, uh, what we need to do is that follow the noble eightfold path so we start with the five precepts and then we do our meditation our mindfulness meditation and in our daily life and move towards the goal of nibbana right so i hope this video was useful in some way give you some insight and do share your insights or reflections that you get uh, in the comment section uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo bhagavate